Hello students, today we are going to start with a new topic that is cell. So, we will be talking about the structure of the cell, function of the cell, uh, even we will be discussing about the plant cell, animal cell, difference within the plant cell and animal cell and a little bit about the functions of the components of the cell and uh, apart from this a bit uh, introduction or a uh, little bit discussion about the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. So, let me write the name of the chapter cell structure and functional unit. As I have discussed uh, this thing many a times that the name of the chapter can be different in different different books uh, like it can be only cell or the function of the cell or something like that related to cell, but the contains will be same. So, if we talk about cell this word is uh, not new or it is not like that we are listening this word for the very first time. We have studied about cell. Uh, in previous classes and we have discussed a lot about the cell in previous classes. Uh, but obviously we will be reading something extra in uh, 8 standard. So, to begin with first of all I would like to start from the history of the cell. So, we will be talking about history. Of the cell. So, history means the first question rises in a mind that who discovered cell, who gave this name cell, from where did it started. So, a scientist uh, Robert Hooke, okay, a scientist named Robert Hooke in 1665, he saw the slide of the cock. Now, what is the meaning of the cock? He saw a slide of the bark. Okay. He made a slide of the bark and he saw the slide in his own microscope, in a microscope which was made by himself. So, when he saw this slide, he observed certain hexagonal shaped cells. He observed certain hexagonal cell or we can say certain hexagonal shape, shape structure he saw. I should not say cell because then he named this as a cell. Okay, He named this as a cell. So, what we are talking about in 1665 scientists named Robert Hooke ok a scientist named Robert Hooke, he, he made a slide of the cock, he made a slide of the cock, what is cock? Cock means the bark, ok the bark. So, when he observed the slide, he saw certain hexagonal shape structure or honeycomb like you know like compartment he saw actually. And he named this structure as cell. Now, actually, in lit, like the meaning of this cell, in li, like it is a Latin word, and it uh, the meaning of cell is small rooms. Okay, it is a Latin word, and the meaning of the cell is what small rooms. And so, this structure appeared like a small room, and so he named as cell. So, the credit goes to Robert Hooke for the discovery of the cell and as I told that he observed the slide of the cock and as you all know that cock or a bark is a dead tissue. It is a dead tissue and so this whatever structure he saw this structure was vacant, it was empty 
it was not having inside like it was not having anything inside ok like nothing like uh, now we know nucleus and all this thing, but at this time when he observed this slide he just saw a compartment or the hexagonal structure to which he named as cells. So, from this it is clear that who discovered cell a scientist named Robert Hooke in 1665 discovered cell, but again I am pointing out this point that he observed the cell in a dead tissue. Till this point it was not clear that all the living organisms are made up of cell, then when it was cleared or who discovered the cell in the living organism. But before discussing that we will talk little bit about Robert Hooke. He is also known as the father of cytology. Robert Hooke is also known as the father of cytology. Now, what is the meaning of cytology? What is the meaning of cytology? So, cytology is a branch of science. What it is? It is it is a branch of science it is a branch of science which deals with the study of the cells may be cells or cell. So, he is known as the father of cytology that means he is known as the father of cytology means what? What is the meaning of cytology? Cytology means the study of the cell a branch of science which deals with the study of the cell. Uh, you know uh, at this moment we can uh, think that oh he discovered a cell this one is not an important uh, contribution or it is not so important but it is not like that. Uh, the contribution of Robert took is one of it can be concluded as one of the uh, you know best contribution or very important contribution in the field of biology. Actually it provides a base for the further study is not it and he was the one who first of all used or coined the word cell. So, in this way the this discovery is very very important. Even though uh, like he discovered cell in a dead tissue, but still as he was the first one to tell that yeah in certain structure or in the maybe the dead tissue certain hexagonal structures can be seen and so he his contribution is remarkable. After this, this was the first scientist. After this, again, the next scientist, even whose contribution is one of the uh, low, like it is also a remarkable contribution in the field of which in the biology is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Now, what did he study or what he discovered? He was the first one to see the or to observe the or to tell that all the living organisms are made up of cell. He studied certain uh, you know bacteria and uh, certain unicellular organisms and he discovered and he was the one who said that living organisms are made up of cell. So, second name I would like to say Anton von this scientist was also his contribution is also remarkable because he was the one who discovered the cell 
in living organism. So, we cannot forget the contribution or the important work of the scientists like Robert Hooke and also Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So, this was the basic or I, I, I should say the history which I wanted to tell or we should know before we proceed or before we study cell in detail. Now, after this, if we want to say what is a cell? If I want to ask a question, what is a cell? How would we describe cell or what should be answer to this question, what is a cell? So, even I would like to write the answer, a cell is a structural functional basic and smallest unit of life. If I want to define cell, how I can define a cell is a structural, functional, basic and smallest unit of life. You know, we all know that cell are like you know, the size of the cell is like these are microscopic. We cannot see cells with our naked eyes. And even I agree there are certain cells which we can see with our naked eyes that we will be discussing in within uh, 5 or 10 minutes. But before this, if I, if I talk in general about the cell, most of these cells are microscopic. That means we cannot see the cells with the naked eyes. We need to use microscope. And so, we can say that cell are the smallest unit. When I say basic, if we talk about a wall, wall is made up of what? What is the basic unit of a wall? Obviously, a brick is a basic unit of wall. By putting bricks upon one on the other, huge structures or huge buildings are formed. In the same way, by the multiplication of the cell, or when the cells are you know kept together brought together or they come together a huge organism or huge structure is formed. So, that is the reason cell is known as basic and it is also known as smallest structure. Now, structure because you know the structure is formed due to what? What? Cells and functional because cells are capable of performing functions like maybe reproduction, maybe digestion, okay, maybe multiplication. So, all this we are going to study, but if I want to define a cell, a cell how can I define? A cell is a structural, functional, basic and smallest unit of life. And you know when the uh, experiments was conducted, and uh, from the tissues, the cells was uh, the cells were removed and kept separately, independently. So cells, you know, they were able to survive. They were able to survive. Okay, they didn't collapse. They didn't, you know, finished or died. So cell was the structure which was able to survive even when they were removed from certain tissues and kept independently. But uh, the components which are present inside the cell or the organelles which are present inside the cell, when these components were removed and tried to kept you know separately, it was found that these uh, organelles or components of the cell could not uh, you know survive. 
it was not possible to keep the components of the cells separately okay that is the reason we can say the cell is the smallest part of the living organism which can uh, you know which can develop individually which can develop separately which is living in itself it has got life okay so what is a cell we have just discussed about what is a cell now coming to the next topic if i need to clean this but before this we'll talk about the organism how can we divide the organism on the basis of the presence of cells i think we all know we have already discussed this thing in uh, previous classes is classes sorry that the organism can be divided as unicellular and multicellular now what is the meaning of uni and what is the meaning of multicellular very simple uni means one uni means one obviously cellular we are talking about cell multi means many multi means many this multi can be more than one two billions and millions and you know it can be uh, like we cannot count even the number of the cells cannot be counted so when we divide when we say that the organisms can be divided on the basis of the uh, you know the uh, number of cells so we cannot count the number of cells in an organism only we can say whether the cell is whether the organism is unicellular or multicellular that means the body of the organism has only only one cell or it has got many cells when we talk about unicellular organism when we talk about unicellular organism we are very clear with the examples like yeast bacteria amoeba palamecium etc so all these organism have one cell these are unicellular that means it the, the organism's body has got only one cell and this one cell is only responsible for performing all the functions which kind of functions children all the functions like there is no place now to write but still like reproduction digestion multiplication is again the same thing movement respiration so all and etc okay so all these functions i should write here etc so all the functions all the functions which are which are necessary for a for an organism to be alive are carried only by one cell okay if we talk about amoeba we all know this is the structure of amoeba this is the structure of the amoeba a uh, single cell a single cell organism all the all these functions are carried by the single cell and so the presence of how many cells can be how many cells are present this whole body is made up of only one cell definitely the organelles are present but cell is one so these kind of organisms which has got only one cell in their body and only that one cell is responsible for all the processes like reproduction digestion movement and all these processes and such kind of organisms are known as unicellular organism 
and the organism which has got millions and millions of cells or even more than few cells you know more than two three cells more than one cell then we can say that these are multicellular organism when we talk about multicellular organism i don't think that we need to quote an example even an ant is a multicellular organism and then obviously the human uh, then a rat elephant whale all these organisms are multicellular organisms and even the plants majority of the organism i am talking about both the plants and animals are multicellular organism that means all the functions which we are talking about uh, all such kind of functions are carried by different different uh, cells how so we'll talk about that just i'll just talk what we have studied over here and then we will move to the next topic that is division of the labor so here first of all we have discussed what is a cell cell is a basic structural functional and smallest unit of the life as we say that brick is the one which makes the wall in the same way cell is the one which makes a living organism who discovered cell robert took in 1665 discovered cell he observed cell in a dead uh, in a slide of the cork or we can say bark but it was what the uh, the cell was present in what dead tissue it was i am so sorry it was present in a dead part like the slide was of the dead part the cork and the bark is uh, it comes under the category of the dead uh, tissue so who is the one who discovered the cell in the living organism so it was anton von leeuwenhoek he was the first one who discovered the cell in the living organism and so uh, he is Uh, i'm talking about the robert hook he is known as the father of cytology actually he is known as the father of the bacteriology which will be reading or studying in some higher classes so we'll talk about the next uh, part of this we will talk about the division of labor now now we will talk about division of labor we'll talk about division of labor but i don't think so that it has to be uh, it has to be written you know i'll just explain like that only now what is the meaning of division of labor to divide the work to divide the work now we take an example of uh, like our body only heart is responsible for pumping the blood okay that stomach won't do it stomach is responsible for with its function is certain uh, limited you know it is related to digestion so it won't be interfering in the function of maybe the heart or the lungs lungs will be responsible for uh, respiration so it won't uh, you know one find a move to the place of the heart and will start pumping the blood this is division of labor that means the work is divided and that particular part which is responsible for that particular work will be uh, continuing that work only that is the meaning of division of labor that means to divide the work but then how this division of labor is done within the cell when we talk about the division of labor within the cell we will be discussing this in the next part of the same chapter next part means in the next lecture we will be discussing about the functions of the components of the cell that will be the uh, division of labor for the cell but a cell how a cell you know is responsible to make the living organism how is it possible so now we will talk about the level of organization we'll be talking about level of organization level of organization before this what we have discussed in very short we have discussed division of labor for this i gave example that as heart is responsible for circulation 
uh, of the blood lungs responsible for the uh, like for the respiration stomach for the digestion that means all the organs have the definite work when we talk about the division of labor within the cell then this will be discussing in the next part where we will be discussing about the uh, functions of the parts of the or the organelles of the cell now we are talking about the level of organization when we talk about the level of organization in what we are talking level of organization in multicellular organism level of organization in multicellular organisms why we don't need to read this in unicellular organism because we know unicellular organism has only one cell so whatever function will be or is or whatever functions are carried all those functions are being carried by the single cell now when we talk about the level of organization in multicellular organism so first of all what is the basic unit we'll just make like this when cells combine what is a cell cell is a basic structural smallest unit of life that means if you talk about any living organism if you take an example of any living organism the smallest part of that organism will be cell you talk about any organism you talk about uh, uh, about the organism present in india out of india of war, the organism which is living inside the water outside the water in the air if you are talking about the living organism that means the smallest part has to be the cell now when cells okay when cells combine when many cells combine they form tissues what what they form they form tissues so how tissues are formed when many cells combine now many cells means what kind of cells a cell which is present in the nervous system and a cell which is present in the uh, lungs all these cells combine now very important point when which kind of cells combine children when the cells of the similar kind or the cells which are performing with which are performing similar kind of function when cells of similar kind which are assigned with the function of a uh, similar kind that means the cells are similar and their function is also they are having a particular basic something one common function when such kind of cells combine they form tissues okay so what is a cell cell is the smallest part of any living organism cell is the smallest unit it is a structural it is a basic it is a functional but the smallest unit of the life when many cells of the same kind which are responsible to which are responsible for performing same function when they combine they form tissues now when many tissues combine they form organs they form organs now when many organs combine they form organ system and when organ systems are kept together a living organism or a body is formed let's talk more about this cell now i don't think that we have to define cell again we know now what is cell now when we talk about tissues what are tissues when the similar kind of cells performing similar kind of function they come together they form tissues so what are tissues if we talk in other way tissues are nothing but they are just tissue is a group of certain similar kind of 
cells. When many tissues combine, they form organs. Organs can be of two types internal organ and external organ. External the organs which are visible eyes, nose, all these organs are uh, legs, hands are visible and these are external organs. When we talk about internal organs which are the organs which cannot be seen. So, lungs, stomach, heart all these organs are internal organs and all these organs are made up of what? All these organs are made up of tissues. All these organs are made up of tissues. When many organs combine they form organ system. How many organ systems are there? There are various, there are different organ system in our body. Like when we talk about digestive system, how digestive system is made up of? Digestive system is made up of esophagus, then first of all the buccal cavity, then the esophagus, then stomach, small intestine, large intestine and many parts are there. So, all these organs when you know when they work together again assigned with a similar kind of work then they form a system and these system can be reproductive system, can be circulatory system, can be respiratory system. All these systems when kept together in a body or when they combine a uh, body is formed. If you want to read it from or if you want to understand this from top to bottom, then how can we understand this? Our body, our body is made up of what? Our body consists of different different systems. Again, there may be reproductive, may be digestive, may be respiratory system. Now, these organ systems are made up of what? These organ systems are made up of different organs. As just now, I gave the example of the digestive system. Now. When we talk about this organs, how, how these organs are made? These organs are made of tissues and how the tissues are made? We all know tissues are made by the cells. So, this is known as level of organization in multicellular organism. So, what is happening? Cell, our basic unit. basic and smallest unit and obviously the structural and the functional unit. Now, when we talk about tissues, how can we define tissues? When many cells or a group of cells a group of cells which performs same function come together They form tissue. Now, when we talk about organ, many tissues many tissues combine to form. an organ. Now, organ system many organs combine to form organ system.
what can be the examples of organ system the examples can be reproductive it can be respiratory can be digestive etc now if I talk about now body a body is made up of different organ system we have discussed the cell so cell is what now we know it is a basic and the smallest and the functional and the structural unit of the life cells combine to form tissues that means the group of cells form tissues and which group of cells cells which are related or they are performing the same kind of function and all these cells are of same type now we will talk about the organs tissues form the organs and organs form the organ system organ system like the reproductive system respiratory that is to all these systems are made up of different different organs now all these systems they form the body so here i think now this level of organization in multicellular organism is clear now we will move to the next topic and that is about the shape and size of the cell.